The wee Merlot could be here another 20 years yet, as long as I have Danny there to keep me right. Certainly you'd be last without him. See, the worst thing is when you see a neighbour starting to mow grass, you think, I need to get my grass cut. I am not ready for silage just quite yet. Uh, going to go down and check some of the grass now. Harvester's nearly ready to go. I have a pile of wood sitting in my silo, which should not have been put there in the first place. Grass this year, if you take last year, there was no grass because it was been that warm. This year, the grass growth hasn't been here because it's been that cold. And it's the joys of Northern Ireland, what we have to put up with. So I would like to be thinking I will get cutting at some stage before maybe too long. Not only am I working with the weather, as the forecast lately is just, you couldn't have went by it. Trying to balance in the farm and being in the office at Farm Flicks, it's just not that easy because when the sun's shining and the grass is ready to cut, contractors, farmers, everyone else is out busy and we're out filming. So there's a fine line trying to manage my own farm and obviously the filming side of it and organising and all the other stuff that goes on behind the scenes in Farm Flicks. I'm walking through this here and it actually is looking quite good. Nice dense sward in this field. Probably would be ready to cut now, but we're just not there yet. Some of the other fields maybe not just as far ahead. I would like to think in a week to 10 days time, I'll have the mower on. I'll be making a start if we can ever pin down John Boy and his John Deere, which reluctantly I'm going to need him to come again and have that old green thing about. But she is kind of useful. My wee Merlot has given me bother again. The other day, the boom stopped going in and out. It's got Danny O'Connell out, and then it transpired we had an issue uh, in, at the buttons and the wires. Before that, the pen or the buttons for the shear grab opening and shutting, and the pen on the bucket, it gave way, and it was changed over to this lever here. But Danny got it fixed and the other buttons fixed. I think there might have been a little mouse in chewing at wires in one of them. But when Danny was here, got him to do a service on her. And I don't think I will ever attempt to service a tractor or machine again. But when I seen Danny out doing it, for what time I would spend footering, man's that quick. He uh, had a, his apprentice out with him as well. And never slacked, just running back and forward. The time, like, I don't know, to have the buttons fixed in their service in under half an hour, around that, less than half an hour. That would have took me two or three hours messing about the time I'd get filters off and the new ones on. When you have somebody who knows what they're doing, it makes a world of difference. And I, even the fact Danny, he jumped in, is working on the buttons. The young fella, he's out taking filters off straight away. It's just go, 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 go. I suppose they know what they're doing, they've done enough of them, everything's just a routine to them. Because I was getting fed up using this other lever for opening and shutting the shear grab. Because Danny was out fixing that, got the other bit fixed. Should have phoned him long ago. Also when I phoned him, he was kind of under pressure. And uh, in fairness to him, an hour later he called out, got it done. Definitely no hanging about, he'd other places to go. But that should be her going for another year and funny. She had started to beep at me, she was getting low on oil, so it was a good time to to do a service on her. But that's one machine that should be ready for silage. Harvester, in theory, touch wood, just needs greased. My Marshall trailer is still sitting with a bent drawbar, never got it fixed. So John's Red Rock and the Big 78 hopefully will be down to pull me out of a hole. Sheep are due to be sheared, so we're gathering them up, getting everything brought from the out farm down home. The dogs, well, Dad took both dogs out, and I don't know yet if the pup's ready to work with another dog. Uh, the pup actually has been coming on quite well, doing as it's told. Two dogs out together, I think it's a wee bit might be confusing for it. But we're fit to loading the sheep in the field, which if that was just me and Dad, uh, me chasing after them, the dog definitely is useful. I was just trying to get uh, trying to get everything down, just ready for the shearing to start. 
I think at the minute I'm actually getting on quite well on the farm, although I just feel frustrated because there's so much more still to do. If I get the shearing out of the way and get the silage in, that'll definitely, it leaves a lot of pressure off. Shearing now, the weather is giving a bit chancy, not really just quite set up to bring the sheep in the night before. Hopefully that all goes to plan. One little problem I have had is behind me, you'll see. <coughs> All these little boys ended up with too many pet lambs. We've had a serious bother this year with yos losing their quarters, losing the elder. Don't know why, haven't every year you've maybe one loses a quarter. This year, that's what, six yos, milk completely gone from them. It's a sconeration. I've heard other boys this year saying the same thing, so I don't know, I just don't know. But when you're feeding all these wee lambs, thankfully they're near ready to come off milk. As soon as they're off milk, they're going out into the field with a creep feed and hopefully that'll be them settled. But it's a lot of wee individual mouths to feed with a bottle. Could have really done with a, a bulk feeder for them. But if the sheep prices stay up this year, we'll not complain as much. But still not convinced that sheep is the way forward, but sheep's still here. I also had David McCall out from AI Services. Uh, Basically, I had a few frozen eggs from a few years ago. I tried the embryo transfer carry-on. Didn't have a lot of success at the time. Was a wee bit scunnered with it. Had frozen eggs sitting for long enough. And it was actually a neighbor. I was, he was going to implant or flush in one of his own cows. So he basically got, I had a few of my eggs. As if his cow wasn't suitable, didn't have enough eggs, he'd recipients ready. So I ended up actually, he got one in calf from it, which I am now going to buy off him. And then I've implanted four. So the embryo game, I do not know. Haven't much experience with it. Little bit I have, haven't had much luck. I know it is, especially in the pedigree game, if you have the right cow that has been breeding well, it's the easiest way to get more progeny out of her but there's an expense to it. Uh, it's definitely not cheap. It all adds up and there's a lot of luck with it. I think you can do everything right and you can still, uh, you can still, it's just 50-50, you know, what's gonna happen. This time, I don't know, we'll have to wait for a, a few weeks and get them scanned to see how it turned out. Kind of one of the other reasons for using them eggs up because I had a batch of heifers and to me, they're not good enough for pedigree breeding. So I may as well stick an embryo in, hopefully try and get something with that pedigree level. Out of them, what will hold, I don't know. Only had four eggs. Don't know what the success rate will be. But for anyone who doesn't know, uh, it's kind of pretty similar to AI in. Same process. Uh, you're basically putting the, the embryos on a straw, the same kind of as a AI straw. You're bringing the heifers on, you have to needle them, put prit in, basically releasing the hormones to keep get the heifers synced up into a batch, because you're pre-planning the day that they're going to be implanted. And then on the day, David comes out, he's the van, it's all kitted out with everything he needs, and it's like a wee mini lab, puts them in, brave and simple. I think with the, the embryo game too, if I had had to go out and buy recipients, then you're trying to get some from a clean herd, trying to keep disease from coming out of your herd. There's lots of ifs and buts, money tied up for it not to go right. I wouldn't advise people to embryo flush or not to do it. I think everyone has to make up their own mind. I know going forward, I have a few cows. I'm the restructuring of my place, I want, there's a lot of cows I want rid of, a lot of cows I like that I want more cattle out of. So it might be an option for me down the line, but I think I'm gonna save up a wee bit of money first. I think the next thing probably I'll be doing before that is trying to save up and buy a stock bull that I want. Because every time I go to a sale, I see the bull I want, never can afford him. But the embryo side of things, if you are lucky, it can pay off, but it also can be an expensive game.